So, so you're saying in, in college, you felt the 12 step program worked for you? Well, in a way, I mean, what worked for me was having a community of people, friends who didn't drink either. So our whole social life was around that. And that was just sort of the norm for me. But as far as the steps, I mean, I have to be honest. Um, I did do the steps. I did the fourth and fourth and ninth step um, real thoroughly. I did the fourth step a couple of different ways. And, and, and the, the AA book, big book, talks about how when you complete those steps, you, you feel all these miraculous changes in your life and your, your desire to drink goes away and your resentments and all that sort of thing. And, and I have to be honest, when I finished it, I felt, I felt a sense of accomplishment that I'd done something you know, to get better. But I definitely didn't feel what it said. I didn't feel like the the things that I came up with in the in this by f- doing the four step the way that it says to do it in the big book. I didn't feel that it really gave what really created the sort of spiritual awakening and, and transformation that they talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it sounds like you could almost describe it as a placebo. Kinda, yeah. I mean, it was. I think there's always some positive in taking really any positive steps toward. You know, just doing something makes a difference. I think it, it helps you mentally. But as far as, you know, that I, I'm sure a lot of your listeners have been uh, are familiar somewhat with the twelve step, with the twelve steps. Um, and in the what big, is, book, uh, what is step number four? Fourth step is the the searching and fearless moral inventory, where you sort of assess all the things that are all your character defects that that lead to you to drink drinking in a problematic way. And, and that's that's an interesting one to me. Your character defects. So it's really self examination of ways in which you are being less than a good person. To put it simply, sort of. Yeah. Um, I mean, the way it's prescribed in the big book, it's it's very much the way it's written out in the big book. It's very much Bill Wilson's personal inventory. So it, it comes up as selfish, self seeking, dishonest, fearful. There's like four different sort of basic character defects character defects that supposedly all people who suffer from alcoholism have. And of course, every person has those things to a certain degree, but I, I definitely, when I finished it, I didn't feel like this was a real insight into who I was and why, why I drank the way I did. Um, but I went along with it and I, you know, I went to meetings and talked up the game and, you know. Uh, and then know, ninth, ninth step, is that where you go around to people and apologize? Yeah, and make amends, and and I made amends for some that were pretty. I mean, there were there were a few things I did in junior high that I didn't think I'd ever face up to, and uh, I did, and and it was. I have to say, I mean, at the time when I did it, it felt. I mean, you always feel sort of a a a, a good feeling of accomplishment when when you do something like that. When, but in the long run, I don't really think it changed my life. Yeah, know? I mean, I guess I would ask, as you point out. Interesting exercises to go through, perhaps beneficial, enlightening, uh, clearing of your conscience, perhaps. But what in doing steps four and nine makes you less likely to drink? What is the connection between four and nine and and an addiction to alcohol? That's right. Well, for me, I, I don't think that ultimately there was. I mean, I, I don't think that that was the direction. Where, really. where is Where is the science? that says that when the brain acknowledges that I'm a selfish person, I'm not a great person, and when the brain goes through the process of apologizing to people, that somehow the brain's uh, uh, addiction to alcohol goes away. Where's the science? Um, there, there isn't really. I mean, I, it's one of the things I go into in my book is that AA, just by nature of how, what it is and how it is, defies any scientific, any true scientific study of it. So. Um, there just but haven't there has been. been some study. People are all citing, and I've been citing it, and I imagine you dug into this in your research. The the study that shows its effective rate of only being five to eight percent. Well, see that that in itself is not scientific. That's completely based on the AA's own internal surveys, which are not controlled in any way. Um, so that's that. Just to be clear, that's where the five to eight percent comes from. Is in their own AA surveys. That's correct. But that's, but Joe, that's shocking in and of itself that even <laughs> AA's own information is indicating our success rate is only five to eight percent. This isn't people going out to slam AA. This is AA's own reporting. That's 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 right. Yeah. Um, I mean, the argument that they there was one paper, quote unquote, paper produced by a member of AA 
um, that had no real scientific or, or graduate, really even graduate level experience that I'm aware of, who, who explained that these numbers are not accurate because the 95% the, the who leave don't actually work the program. That in order for it to work, you have to go to 90 meetings in 90 days. You've got to get a sponsor. Um, it works if you work the program. That's right. right? That's right. Which I don't know if you've heard one of my intros in this, but that's basically saying it, it works if it works. That's so, right. I mean, the whole point is, wait a minute. You've got them. You've got people that come in your front door with a desire to quit. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there or some inclination to quit. So That's you've right. got a captured audience walking in the front door looking for treatment for this problem that they have. Bottom line is of those of the percentage that come in, how many are leaving with the problem with the issue cured? And that's the five to eight percent number. That's that's what they come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, are you have you seen any other figures as far as uh, the, uh, the one um, not not about specifically real AA. There was a big study called Project Match um, in the late in the 90s, 2000s that purported to study AA in comparison to cognitive behavioral therapy and another uh, maybe another um, a form of treatment. But that itself wasn't AA. They can't study AA because AA is is in some ways it's an anarchistic group. You know the, the way that that works with anonymity. There's no leader. There's just no way to pin it down and have a control group next to it. So what that study did was they used an approximation of AA, which was really therapy using the 12 step principles. And what they found was that it was about equally successful uh, compared to the other control groups that they, that they, that they used.